The Greenland Experience, the land of unending ice. Every journey starts somewhere, and like every Princess Cruises experience, this one begins here, on the bridge. And the man taking care of us, the master of the vessel, Captain Mario Ciruzzi. Okay, um, well, I'm from Italy, and uh, I'm from Genoa, and uh, I started uh, with Princess Cruises back in 1991, on board the former Crown Princess, I was a young uh, deck cadet at that uh, time and uh, I've been uh, growing uh, throughout the years uh, through the ranks uh, up to my actual position as captain since uh, 2012. I've been uh, mainly in command with uh, various uh, class of ships including uh, Sun class, uh, Coral class, uh, Grand class obviously and the Caribbean Princess. I've been in Greenland before, it was back in 2013 with the Caribbean Princess. And I was uh, uh, as a second captain during uh, the last couple of uh, season before all the new regulation came into, into place. We used to send uh, a second captain supporting uh, the captain in charge of the vessel. So at that time I was uh, basically the incognito captain uh, doing uh, the, basically the night shift uh, and doing all the hard work, actually. Yes. So, second time for me now. It's always the same feeling when you uh, get into places where guests are not normally going because they are remote, because they are difficult to, to reach to. Uh, it gives you this uh, very, very um, sense of uh, awarding, you know, because you get to, to know that uh, your guests are reaching uh, places uh, where they wanted to, go, to be and to go 
and it's very, very satisfying for me, let's say. Yes, uh, it, it does, uh, because mainly you are going in uh, Arctic region and uh, this includes uh, having uh, been through uh, specific training. In fact, uh, myself, uh, my uh, senior officers such as the staff captain and the safety officer have been uh, through um, two weeks training for these polar code uh, certifications which includes a lot of hours in the simulator, going through um, navigation in uh, restricted water, in icy water, uh, in within the polar region, as well as also the other senior officers of the watch, uh, the officers who are standing the watch at night and during the day, they also been through this kind of training. Uh, why are we doing that? Because uh, we don't come here often and uh, there are particular uh, you know, challenges, uh, such as uh, icy water, iceberg, uh, and uh, you, know, you have to pay extra attention. So as part of our polar uh, code requirements, uh, there are extra equipments that we have to have on board, um, such as uh, searchlights, which are located up here on the famous Monkey Islands. There are two big searchlights, which are actually controlled from here. There are the two controls here, and with those searchlights, you can focus uh, on uh, ice, which could be icebergs, uh, bergebiet, uh, broken ice, so you can see at night uh, and identify the way to go through when you are navigating through icy water. Yes, very important. Plus, uh, for uh, our guests, yes, we have uh, thermal protecting uh, equipment uh, available, and those are um, located in a safe place in, within the master stations area. And again, it is a requirement because should the temperature drop that drastically down and we may face uh, an emergency, we are equipped with such, uh, with such uh, protection. Yes, actually on arrival this morning in Nook, we did uh, found, uh, spotted a few icebergs. Uh, we were very excited on the bridge because they were the very first ones we saw coming into the Arctic Sea, uh, which, is, which was a nice feeling, but again, there was a plenty of water to go through. Uh, it was early in the morning and I hope that uh, some of our guests did see them. Yeah, this has been, uh, this is my second uh, time in Greenland. It's a uh, uh, unique, uh, you know, uh, opportunity for me. And uh, I have to say, very happy to have docked the ship in Nook and being the biggest, actually, ship which uh, ever been uh, built in Nook uh, in this particular place was very, uh, nice to turn the ship around and back into the berth in this uh, such a unique uh, environment. Uh, yes, so very happy about it. So we, we do have two uh, Danish pilots uh, on board and the uh, reason they're here is uh, 
to help us to assist navigating, especially when we are getting closer to the Greenland coast. They are obviously the exper expertise. They are certified in navigation under, uh, you know, in icy waters and uh, over the southern part of Greenland where we are actually operating. Uh, it is a requirement to have them. Obviously, there was not, uh, you know, an option. It is mandatory when a ship such as the Caribbean Princess is calling those ports in Greenland to have the pilots. Um, it is a, of a great help, obviously. They are on the bridge with us, part of our team, working together and, uh, you know, getting uh, to the port safely and uh, in good time. My name is Jens. Uh, I'm from Denmark and uh, I live in Copenhagen. Uh, I work here on the ship as the pilot for Greenland, uh, for a company called Greenland Pilot Service. I've been working now in Greenland for almost seven years, sailing up here, and out of the seven, the three of them are as pilot. Um, and the reason why we're here is because, yeah, for a ship this size, it's compulsory, and we're here for the reason to help the ship, help the, the crew up here on the bridge, and navigate safely through Greenland and get in and out of the port, yeah. So for becoming a pilot, I have the exactly same educa education as the, as the officers here on the bridge, as the captain, as the first mate or the chief officer. Uh, I'm a master mariner, educated in Denmark. And then I have years, again, experience of sailing in Greenland. I sailed up here in a small tanker. And when you have some years, it has to be at least two years in Greenland, uh, then you can apply as pilot and then you go to pilot training. And the pilot training was in Denmark and it was actually a few like uh, we go into what is it called uh, uh, ship maneuvering courses and uh, then you have to do some tests in Greenland waters go through all the paper charts and uh, stuff like that and then you become a pilot most of the ships of gives they have all the, the equipment already uh, and the cruise ships have really really good equipment compared to like <laughs> tankers and bull carriers and other ships that we pilot too uh, but the thing we bring out is we have some iPads that we can plug into the AES systems of the ship. And that means that we get all the data, the ship size and stuff. Like that. And the thing we have on this iPads is uh, charts, electronic charts for Greenland. Greenland is very, very badly charted. Uh, it's one of the few places in the world where you still go on old paper charts. Uh, and one of the things we bring up here is our iPads. They, it's, a, it's just a help, navigational help. Uh, with our knowledge of the places, with this iPad, with the paper charts, we can navigate safely into the places. Like the last place we, the last place in this cruise, the Nautilic, uh, that's one of the places where you need to have knowledge. You need to have, uh, like the iPads, equipment, paper charts to come in. Uh, a lot of reefs, a lot of small islands to maneuver a big ship like this. In uh, normally, Caribbean Princess is a full active charts. What does it mean? That we do navigate all around the, the worlds with electronic charts. But because Greenland, and um, specifically the place where we're going, uh, are not covered with such as electronic charts, we plotting, we are navigating with paper charts. So we go back the old days, which is uh, nice to see for, for me because I've been starting my career and I've been doing it for many years. Uh, but it's, a lot more difficult with the youngest officers because they never done it before. They always been navigating with electronic charts. So the first couple of days where they were like, ah, but they are up to speed now and it's all good. The biggest challenges of being a pilot in Greenland is for sure the elements, the nature, the ice, the weather in Greenland and uh, is one of the main reasons why we have to be on board here to try to, not try to, but help the ships navigate safely through this. Um, many of these cruise ships don't have any, uh, they don't really have any strong polar coat, uh, not polar uh, hull, like they're not strengthened a lot, yeah? So we have to be really careful which kind of ice we sail into, stuff like that. Uh, so the, the big thing here is when we meet ice, stuff like how to navigate through it in a 100% safe way. Uh, with the cruise ships. <laughs> the most challenging part of the three we have here in Greenland, uh, you can actually, it will be in the Nautilus, the last one. That is the most challenging, the way you go into a lot of 
sharp turns and the, the anchorage spot, this ship is, is, is large compared in there. Uh, when we anchor up, we'll only have a few, a few cables that's, uh, that's uh, around the ship to maneuver around on the reefs and stuff when you're anchor, yeah? Um, but also here in Nook, this is the largest ship, ship ever to enter Nook. We had a ship a couple of weeks that was four meter longer. Uh, but this is the heaviest ship ever to enter Nuke. So we say this is the biggest ship that's ever entered and stayed alongside Nuke. There's no doubt that the, the Arctic and the Arctic region, Antarctica, Arctic are a lot in the news. Are, you hear a lot about it now because of global warming, ice melting and all this stuff. And that has for sure made it a more popular place now to come and visit. And it is special. For me, uh, in the world we live in, when there's more cruises coming out, it's easier to travel. Uh, you can go to bouncy islands all over the world, but there's not many places like Greenland. This is, and it's still one of the most remote places you can go to. Uh, and for me, one of the most beautiful places. When you go up and you meet icebergs, you have seal, you have whales around you, uh, for me it's a special place. It's nice to be also in this region of the world because of the wonder of the landscapes and, and the wildlife and of course the northern lights where there are chances to see and uh, I believe that uh, we got it. Uh, already once and uh, I hope that uh, many of you have uh, the chance to see the Northern Lights uh, during this uh, unique uh, voyage in Greenland. Although the captain takes care of everyone on board, he can't do it alone. In Below Decks, we have a group of dedicated engineers that keep the vessel running. My name's Chris and I'm the first engineer on board the Caribbean Princess. I come from London, England. I've uh, worked with Princess for six years. Uh, my primary roles and responsibilities on board the vessel are to look after our engine control room watchkeeping team, and that's our 24-hour manning for our engine control room, which is located on deck four. The engine control room is our nerve center of the vessel. It's where all of our alarm inputs and outputs, thousands of alarm inputs and outputs come into our automation systems, which helps us operate our main engines, propulsion systems, as well as monitoring ventilation systems, swimming pools, etc., all around the vessel. So on any ocean-going vessel, the technical operations are absolutely immense, and the technical department on board Caribbean Princess consists of 106 people working around the clock to maintain every aspect of the vessel, whether it's plumbing, carpentry, our main engines, more specifically, my team, the operators, the engineering watch keepers who man the engine control room are a team of nine people. We have three second engineers, we have three third engineers, and we have three motormen. It's actually quite an exciting time down the engine room as shortly we're going to be heading off to Greenland. So at the moment the vessels are heavily based in our Caribbean climate. We've got extremely high temperatures downstairs, our engines, our atmospheric temperature is extremely high, our seawater temperature is high, so there's lots of challenges facing the engineering department. As we head up to Greenland, we expect completely different engineering challenges. The temperatures changing in the engine room around the vessel causes all different unique engineering responsibilities, environmental standards, uh, in addition to different plant operations and configurations. Starting with uh, reduced speeds due to the, the potential risks of other vessels, traffic uh, interactions with uh, foreign objects in the water. Uh, the engineering challenges which are presented to the technical department are completely different to that of the Caribbean. So going from high temperatures right the way through to low temperatures, in the Caribbean we have no requirement to heat our fuel. Uh, we have no very limited requirements to heat our guest areas as well. The ambient temperature surrounding the vessel, whether it's air temperature, sea temperature, are much higher in the Caribbean cruising environments. This means our primary purpose in the engine control room as we're moving over to the cooler climates is to ensure that all of our assets, whether it's our steering gear, our main electrical systems, our guest areas, the theatre, our ventilation systems are all at the temperatures they should be. However, this brings, does bring some new uh, additional improvements to our engineering daily working life. 
which includes a much cooler engine room. So in the Caribbean, you would go downstairs and you'd need a new boiler suit after 10 minutes because you'd be sweating. That now is uh, no longer an issue as we approach these nice, cool climates. So on behalf of the chief engineer, the entire technical department, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure accommodating everybody on board the Caribbean Princess in our goal to reach Greenland. We hope everybody's enjoyed uh, the unique um, environment and atmosphere that Greenland provides everybody. Uh, you've chosen one of the, the most beautiful vessels in the fleet um, and over the course of the cruise you joined us as complete strangers and you've become our friends and our family and we're forever grateful you've shared this experience with us. Nook. The portion of an iceberg visible above the water is only about 10% of the total iceberg. Icebergs can be white, or blue, or even have dark stripes. Blue icebergs have very little air inside, while white icebergs have many air bubbles or a snowy surface. Greenlanders once used icebergs to distinguish the seasons and even to identify talents. A testament to their steadfast presence and the intertwined character of the Greenlandic culture with their country's powerful nature. Media stressed that the ice in Greenland is melting. And while it's absolutely true, as long as the Greenland ice sheets exist, icebergs of all sizes and shapes will fill these Arctic waters. Many of the picturesque icebergs along Greenland's west coast come from two North Greenland glaciers, and as luck would have it, they share the same name. The largest collection of icebergs in Greenland exists at the Unishet Icefield. True to its nickname, Icebergs Capital of the World, Unishet is home to thousands of icebergs that can be seen year-round by hiking, sailing, or from the air. Nuuk and Pemut also have their own fjords with iceberg-filled waters. In short, keep one golden rule in mind. Wherever a glacier meets the water, one will find icebergs. Dark stripes in icebergs come from the dirt that glaciers pick up as they move land to sea. South Greenland is a special place for iceberg watching for not one, but two phenomena. Blue ice is rampant in South Greenland and appears so vibrant against a backdrop of lush green hills.
החלטה. The largest town in South Greenland with 3,229 inhabitants. The city was founded in 1775 and is the only city in Greenland with a fountain in the center square. The hike around the water supply, Lake Tasorach, will take you from the center of the city out into the mountains in a matter of minutes. Nanotolik. Nanotolik, which means uh, the place of polar bears. <laughs> well, it's funny because there are no polar bears. I haven't seen any polar bears here. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, thank you very much uh, to you all and uh, thank you for being here during this particular voyage, which we only do once per year because it's very challenging for us, for me on the bridge, for my team on the bridge, for the engineers down below who are actually doing a, a lot of uh, extra works, extra effort. So thank you very much and I'm sure you have fully enjoyed this experience. Thank you very much.